while you guys are getting out your stuff for notes, I want you to think about this question up here, okay? Two small, heavy balls have the same diameter, but one weighs twice as much as the other. The balls are dropped at the same height, so from two stories, at the same time. The time they reach the ground will be, A, twice as long for the lighter one as for the heavier one, B, longer for the lighter ball, but not twice as long, C, twice as long for the heavier one as for the lighter one, D, longer for the heavier ball, but not twice as long, or E, nearly the same for both balls. What do we think it is? E. E, why? Good job. It is E. You guys, though, during, not today, but probably over the next couple of days, you're going to learn how to mathematically prove that. Okay? Because today we start kinematics in one dimension. Do you think we'll do it in more than one dimension? Yeah, we're going to do it in two dimensions, too. Do you think we'll do it in three? Do you think we'll do it in four? No, we only go up to two. We, we do one and two dimensional kinematics. We don't do three and four and all that kind of stuff, okay? So the first thing we need to think about when learning physics is that everything we discuss, we discuss as if it occurs in a reference frame. Do you guys know what a reference frame is? A frame of reference. A frame of reference. Perfect. What does that mean, though? Like, if you had a reference frame, like, what's my reference frame right now? It's, 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 from front of the, it's in the front of the class by the board. That would be my reference frame. Okay? Yours would be from your seat. Everybody has their own reference frame from their own seat. Okay? Now... Let's do an example, though, to sort of get us to think about reference frames a little bit more. Also, you guys are so welcome. You get to experience my absolutely horrible drawing skills throughout the year. So strap in. It's a fun ride. How's everybody's day going? Pretty good. Yeah? That's good. What am I drawing? Train. Yeah, good job. Okay, we got a train, okay? And this train is going to the right or going east at 80 kilometers per hour, okay? We have a thing, well, we have a person, maybe it's an alien, who knows, who's inside here and they're walking, okay? And they're also walking to the right. And they are going to the right at 5 kilometers per hour hour. So I've got some questions. If you are sitting on the train, you're one of the passengers, how fast is that person walking? Okay. If you are standing out here waiting at the train because you like trains, hi train, how fast is that person walking? 85 kilometers per hour. Why? Because the person in the train would also be going 80, so he's only going 5. Yeah. So he's, the train's going 80 kilometers per hour. He's going 5 kilometers per hour. Add them together to the person outside. It looks like you're going 85 kilometers per hour. That's all the reference frame is. Okay? Now, in physics, thankfully, we use the coordinate system that you're already used to. You've used a million years in math, right? What's this? It's a positive or negative? Okay, what's over here? What's this? Negative Y. What's this? Positive Y. Okay, now if we were to use north, south, east, and west, what's this? East. North. West. South. Right. We've got east, north, west, and south, all right? So to the right or east will always be positive in one-dimensional kinematics. To the left or west is negative. Up or to the north is positive. Down or two is um, south. Isn't going to be negative. Okay. Any questions so far? No. no? While we're doing one-dimensional kinematics, this is what we'll use. It's going to stay like this. It'll stay up, down, left, right. Later on, we sort of end up bending it and twisting it in different ways. But for right now, we're going to be dealing with this. Okay. Everybody good so far? Yeah, yes. Awesome. What's been the best part of your day? Okay. 
Oh, I've got suck ups this year. Perfect. Okay. Now, what we want to talk about first is the difference between distance and displacement. Have you guys ever heard of displacement? Okay. Well, then tell me, what's the, what is distance? Okay, just how far you go, right? What's displacement? Okay, so distance is just going to be how far we went slash traveled. Okay, so let's say you live 10 miles from the school. How far do you travel to the school to come here in the morning? How far do you travel on your way back? So what's the overall distance you traveled? 20 miles, okay? Displacement is how far you are from where you started. Okay, so let's say you go from your house to the school. What's your displacement? 10 miles, okay. So we're gonna think about your round trip for the day now. House to school, school to house. What's your displacement? Zero miles, because where did you start? No. Where did you end? No. So did you go anywhere? No. Technically, no. So according to displacement, I do nothing every day at work at all. According to distance, though, I actually, I did something. I travel around, right? Okay, another thing you need to know about these is, have you guys heard of scalars and vectors? Oh, okay, what, okay, so you say you never heard about vectors. You've heard of scalar, though? No? Okay. So distance, we call distance a scalar. What this means is that all it has is a magnitude. And if you're like, what is magnitude? That means it would just have a number. So for instance, for distance, we would just put 10 miles. We just went 10 miles. And that's enough for distance. It doesn't need anything else. You don't have to say if you went 10 miles east, if you went 10 miles west. If it was north, if it was south, the right, the left, it does not matter for distance, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? We don't care about what direction you went when you're talking about distance. Displacement is something that we call a vector, okay? A vector has two things. It has a magnitude, like the scalar, but it has something else. What do you think the something else is? Yeah. Direction. Perfect. It's direction. That's the something else. It has magnitude and direction. So would it be enough for me to say that my displacement from home to work is 10 miles? No. no. What would I need to add? I need to add a direction. So maybe it's 10 miles east. If I add that east, is it now a vector? Yeah. Well, east is to the right, right? So what if I just put my displacement is positive 10 miles? Is that okay? Yeah. What if I said 10 miles to the right? Is that okay? All of those are acceptable because they have what with the magnitude? Direction. Direction. Okay, making sense so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay, awesome. So let's say we have somebody and they like to go for walks. So they're walking. Okay, the bit knees is what lets us know that they're walking. Put some little motion in there, okay? Now, he's going to start right here. And we're going to say that he is starting at zero, okay? And he's going to walk all the way over here. And we'll say over here is 70 meters, okay? He's looking for a good picnic spot. He just wants to eat his lunch on his lunch break to look some, something pretty, okay? So he walks 70 meters. Once he gets down there, though, he realizes... Well, there is a slightly prettier place 30 meters back. Okay. Does 
So he's going to sit there and eat his lunch 30 meters back. It's that little picnic table. Okay? Now, what's the distance he traveled while trying to find the perfect place to eat lunch? 100 meters. 100 meters. Awesome. What's his displacement while finding the perfect place to eat lunch? 40 meters. I like that. 40 meters to the right. How did you guys figure out it was 40 meters? 70 minus 30. 70 minus 30. Not too shabby, huh? No? This is what? Yeah. It gets more and more interesting as the year goes on. Enjoy this while we're here, trust me. <laughs> okay, still so far so good? Yeah, you promise? Awesome. Also, welcome to How I Do Notes. I hope you don't hate it. We'll see. And I am recording it like I said I would be, so. Can I erase this guy? Okay, he ate his lunch, he's done. He's gone forever now. Okay. Now, how, what about if we think about this over a time interval? So we'll say somebody starts at an initial time at an initial place and then goes to a new place. So, we'll put our little coordinate system here. We'll have 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, and then I'm going to have do two over here. And you'll have the same stuff set up. Okay. So, this guy over here is going to walk from 10 meters to 30 meters. Okay? So what would we call his, let's call his initial position X naught. Okay, we're going to use X to represent position because what is he on? Is he on the X or Y axis here? He's on the X, right? He's doing horizontally. So we're going to call an initial position X naught. Okay, what is his initial position here? Where's he starting at? He's starting at 10 meters, right? I've got him on the little 10 tick. So if we call an initial position x naught, what do you think we call a final position? We're going to call it xf for final. It's going to be his final position. What is his final position? 30 meters. Okay. Now, what's his displacement? Let's think about it. So, how we're going to represent displacement as a symbol is with this right here. Does anybody know what this triangle is? Delta. delta. What does delta mean? Yeah, it means a change in something. So, displacement is going to be our change in our position because x is what we're using to represent our position, right? So, does this symbol make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, to get a change in position, what do you think we're going to have to do? Final minus initial. So we're going to take our final x position and subtract our initial x position from it. Okay? So when we do this, what is our final x position? What is it, you guys? 30. What's our initial? 10. Okay, so what is our displacement? 20 meters. Okay, but this is displacement, so we need a direction. What's our direction? To the right, or we can put east. I'm lazy, so I'm going to put east because it's shorter to right than to the right. Either one's acceptable, though. What else is acceptable? What else could we do? Yeah, we could put plus 20. That's probably the quickest one, right? Okay. Now we've got somebody who is at 30 meters and walks over to 10 meters. So what's their initial position here? 
30. What's their final position here? Okay, so if we're solving for their displacement, we're going to do what minus what? 10 meters minus 30 meters. And what does that give us, you guys? Negative 20 meters. Do we have to write anything with that? Not really, because what does the negative tell us? The negative goes ahead and tells us that it's going to the left. If you hate negative signs, what could you write instead? Yeah, you could write 20 meters west, or you could write 20 meters to the left. Why are all of those acceptable? Yeah, they all have a direction. And as long as there's a direction, is it a vector? Yes, as long as there is a direction, we can call it a vector. So this, you guys, is one of your first equations that you've learned, the equation for displacement. So displacement is our final position minus our initial. Now, I know you guys would probably love to stop here, but we won't. Okay, before we go on to the next section though, if this guy walked from 10 to 30 and then turned around and walked back to 10, what would his displacement be? Zero, because his initial position would have been 10 and his final position would have been? And when you do 10 minus 10, you get? Zero, you guys are so smart. Okay, now what we're gonna talk about, anybody wanna guess? Yeah, average velocity. And we're also going to talk about this sort of versus speed. Because I'm sure throughout your life, do people sort of use the term speed and velocity interchangeably? Do you think you're supposed to do that? No, it's horrible. It's a sin. It's the 11th commandment. Thou shall not use velocity and speed interchangeably. Okay? Now... Which one of these do you think is a scalar? <laughs> it's speed. Speed is a scalar, okay? And what does a scalar mean? It has only magnitude. So if speed is a scalar, what's velocity? It's a vector. And a vector has what? Yeah, it's got the magnitude and the direction. I think I might have heard somebody say directitude. Directitude. I mean, I guess you could call it. Okay, now, speed, when we say speed, we're just saying how fast we're going. So if you're in the car and you're driving, what do you try to follow, a speed what? A speed limit, okay? When you're going a speed limit, do they tell you which direction you're supposed to be going? No, is there like an understood direction you should probably be going? Yeah, okay, but they don't tell you it, right? So when you look at your speedometer, does it tell you if you're going left or right on your speedometer? No, it just tells you how fast you're going, okay? That's speed. Velocity, though, it cares which way you're going. It cares if you're driving east. It cares if you're driving west, okay? It wants to know if you're going to New York or California. Does speed care? No. All right. So let's do an example with speed first because speed is scalar, so it's a little bit simpler. Let's say your car goes 240 kilometers, and it does this in three hours. Now, if somebody said they went 240 kilometers in three hours, and you wanted to figure out if they were following the speed limit or not, what math would you do to find their speed? 240 divided by three. Can somebody please do 240 divided by 3 for me? Look at that. Those mental math skills. I love it. Okay. 80 kilometers per hour. So it's going as fast as what? The train was. So maybe this is the train. You're in a train, not a car. It's inception. You don't know what's happening. All right. Now, that means that just right now, to find our speed, we did distance divided by what? Time. Is it just time or is it a certain kind of time? 
It's an elapsed time. It's how much time elapsed over that period. So when you started, you probably started at hour zero and you ended at hour three. So it's how much time passed during that sort of segment there, okay? How do you think velocity is different from speed when you calculate it? If speed is distance over elapsed time, what do you think velocity is? Distance. Ooh, I like that. Displacement what? Over elapsed time. Yes, we're going to have displacement over elapsed time for velocity. And is this just any kind of velocity or is this a specific kind of velocity? Average. This is our average velocity, okay? Now, you might be wondering, how do we represent this in symbols? Because we all like those better than writing this all out, right? How we're going to do that is we're going to draw a V. Do you think we keep this V as just a V for our velocity, though? What do we have to do to it, if you had to guess? We're going to put this little, like, arrow thing over it. What do you think that represents? The direction that it's a vector. Yeah, okay. So what was our symbol for displacement? Delta x, right? And what was what do you think it is for delta for um, elapsed time if you had to guess? You think I draw a clock? Delta t. And you guys, it's important that we use a lower case t. Uppercase T means other things. You'll learn about those later. For time, we do lowercase t, okay? So far, so good still? Yeah? Okay, I want to take this a step further just so you can see what it looks like spread out. What did we say delta x is equal to? What minus what? Okay, so what about delta t? What do you think it'll be? Yeah, that T final minus the T initial. Good job, you guys. So this is our second equation that we learned for today. Because you guys already knew the equation for speed. I'm not going to count it. But this is our other physics equation we've learned today. Okay, so we've learned two so far. And velocity, what is it? Scalar or vector? Vector. Okay, so let's solve for some speeds and velocities and compare and contrast, all right? So we've got our little guy back again. He's going between the 10 and the 30, all right? Got 10 over here. We've got 30 over here. And, whoosh. okay, he's going from 10 to 30, okay? He is doing this from his x initial, which is what? 10 to an x final, which is 30. What do you think we should call his initial time? Perfect. I love calling things zero. What about his final time? You know, I'm going to choose 30 seconds. He went, he went that far in 30 seconds. Okay, he's running. He's getting an exercise for the day, okay? Now, if we were to solve for this man's average speed, how would we do it? Just the speed. What's his distance? Yeah. Wouldn't it make sense for a starting point to also be zero? It doesn't have to be, though. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So in this case, if you made that starting point zero, though, your final position would need to be 20 because we're going 20 overall. So sometimes when we do problems, it'll say that the starting point is zero, or sometimes it'll give you a starting point of something like 10 meters. The starting point could be 10.395 even. It can change up, okay? So how would we calculate the average speed, though? What's the distance he's traveled? 20 meters. And what's the time that's elapsed? Okay, so what is his average speed?
You can take out a calculator. They're highly encouraged in this class. Yeah, so I'm going to say 0 0.67. And what are those units going to be? Meters over second. So what are our units for speed? Meters per second, right? Okay, now if we were to find our average velocity, that's displacement over elapsed time, right? What's our displacement here? 20. Is it positive or negative? Positive. What's our elapsed time? 30 seconds. Okay, so what's our average velocity going to be? This is not a trick question. Yeah, but what are we going to have to include with that 0 0.67? Direction. What's the direction? It's right. It's east. It's plus. It's whatever you feel like putting, okay? Now, once he starts running this way, what if there's somebody else at 30 who decides to run to where this guy started. So this is a different person. They're going to pass each other on the way. Is there, and they do it in the same amount of time. They both take 30 seconds, okay? To travel the same 20 meters. Is this person's average speed going to be any different from the other person's? No. What about their velocity, though? Same number, same number but negative, okay? So their average speed would still be what? But what would their average velocity be? Negative 0 0.67 meters per second. So what does velocity have that speed doesn't? Direction. Direction. Are we still doing OK? Still making sense? Something, um, I'm going to ask you if it makes sense a lot, because something about physics that you'll either love or hate is that it's 100% cumulative. What does that mean? It all, works again. it all just builds on itself throughout the year. So whatever you learn at one point in time, is it ever going to go away? Nope, never. never goes away. It just keeps on building and building and building. So keep that in mind. Do you know what else is going to be cumulative in this class? Great. Your tests. Yeah. To make sure you don't actually let yourself forget anything. Oh, yeah. Because what's cumulative at the end of the year? Your AP exam. Woo! Speaking of that, if anybody is not signed up for AP Classroom, what do you need to get signed up for immediately? AP Classroom. If your phone hated you one day and refused to sign up with the code, what should you do? Try again. It's online. Okay. It's online. If you go to my um, web page under the school, it's there. All righty. So let's do another example. Let's say we've got a car. I'll write this up here so you guys can copy down the example. To always have it with you. A car travels at a constant... 50 kilometers per hour, okay? And it's going to do this for 100 kilometers, okay? So it's traveling at 50 kilometers per hour for 100 kilometers. Then it's going to speed up, which you'll learn about speeding up tomorrow. Don't worry about it today. It then speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour and is driven for 100 kilometers more. It's driven for 100 kilometers. Okay? We want to know what is the car's average velocity over this trip. OK, 
Okay. While you guys get that down, I'll draw a little picture. Do you think drawing pictures is important? Going to be important in physics? Probably. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be important. Helps with visualization. All right, my gorgeous picture. This is our car traveling, okay? Which direction did I make it traveling? East, so we can keep everything nice and positive. Okay, so we're starting out at zero meters, zero kilometers, whatever you wanna call it, it's zero. And we're gonna go at 50 kilometers per hour until we reach 100 kilometers. How long is that going to take us to do? Two hours, how do we know it's gonna take us two hours? Yeah, because you go 50 kilometers every hour, you're going 100 kilometers, so 50, 50 makes 100. It's going to take us two hours, okay? Then, once we hit this 100 kilometer mark, we're going 100 kilometers an hour for another 100 kilometers. How long is that trip going to take? One hour. So, what would we consider our elapsed time here? Three hours. Three hours, okay. Now, what is the car's average velocity over this trip? Do we have any guesses off the bat? Yes. 75 kilometers per hour. That is wrong. 75 kilometers an hour is wrong. Do you have any other guesses? Do you want to see why it's wrong? Yeah, we have to deal with the time. Let's take the time into account. That doesn't really take the time into account. So what did we say the equation is for average velocity? Whatever what? Displacement over elapsed time, okay? So that means displacement's what minus what? Final minus. Final minus initial. What's our final, you guys? 200. 200 what? What's our initial? Okay. And what's our final time? Three hours. What can we call our initial time, you guys? Zero. We can call it zero hours. Okay, so we're going to have 200 kilometers divided by what? Three hours. Okay, somebody let me know what that is. Ooh, 66.67. Okay. What are the units for that? Kilometers per hour. Okay. So the answer is right, but, but, in physics, we like to always have the same units. What units had we been using? Meters per second. Okay, so we need to get this into meters per second because this kilometers per hour thing is really hurting my soul right now. Okay? So we know that on average, we would have traveled 66.67 kilometers every hour, right? We need that in meters per second. Do we want to get rid of the kilometers first or the hours first? What do you guys want to do? Get rid of the kilometers first? Okay. So how would we do that? Oh, we're not going to want to multiply by a thousand. No, 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 no. Or do we? Come on, you guys, tell me. We do, but what do we do? We multiply by a thousand what? Meters, not just a thousand, but what goes on the bottom? Here we go. We've got to use all of our terminology or it's wrong. Okay. So we got rid of the kilometers. What do we do now? Okay, hours. How do you get rid of hours? We're going to seconds, yeah. Huh? We don't have to jump minutes, no. My other AP class couldn't jump minutes. They couldn't remember how many seconds were in an hour. <laughs> 3,600. 
Okay. So you said in one hour, there's how many seconds? 3,600. You guys all agree with that? I get rid of our hours. Okay. I need somebody to do the math for me. What was this called in chemistry? Dimensional analysis. Woo. It's like one of the only things that carries over from chemistry, but. 8.52. What 0.52? What are the units? That's the pretty answer. That's the answer that I would want at the end of the day. What are our units for velocity? Meters per second. Do we like any other units? No, we hate them. Unless you're specifically asked to put them in those units. Otherwise, you always assume to put it in what? Meters per second. Okay. So we're going to do another example. You guys having fun yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I'm having fun. Can I erase my gorgeous imagery over here? Okay. So, for this one, we are going to look for how far can a cyclist travel in 2.5 hours along a straight road? So we've got no change in direction here. It's going to go on a straight road. If her average velocity is 18 kilometers per hour. I'm going to put the equation we know up here. Okay, so what do we know? What are the variables that we know? Okay, do we know distance travel? No, we know, we know, we know time. Yes, we know elapsed time and we know average velocity, right? What's our elapsed time here? What's our average velocity? What are we trying to find? Are we trying to find distance or displacement? And what are our units for displacement that we like to have them in? Meters. As our final thing for displacement, we like meters. So will we end up having to do dimensional analysis again? Yeah. Okay. Now, how, though, are we going to rearrange this to solve for that? Multiply by the change of time. Multiply what by the change of time? Just the velocity? Both sides. Why do you have to multiply both sides? To get rid of it, right? Okay. Everybody still good so far? So far so good? Yeah? All right. So do we have everything we need to plug this in? Do we? Do we have what we need? Do we have velocity? Do we have a lot of time? Yeah? Okay, so what's our average velocity? Okay, what's our last time? All right, I need somebody to let me know what my displacement is. You can give it to me in kilometers first, don't worry. What is it? 45 kilometers. You guys agree with 45 kilometers? Does anybody disagree with 45 kilometers? No? Okay. So, how do we go from kilometers to meters? This one should be a lot faster. Okay, what do you get? 45,000. 45,000. You talk so fast. Okay. How would we write that in scientific notation? Uh, 1.5 times 
two, three, four. What are the units? Absolutely beautiful final answer there. Absolutely beautiful. Okay.